Hello, today we want to talk about how woodwind instruments make sound. You will need th several little things. You will need a small strip of paper about two inches long by a quarter of an inch, no wider than that. One edge needs to be perfectly straight. You can use a soda straw, but it needs to be plastic. Paper ones will work, but not nearly as well. You will also need a couple of empty or filled bottles. Partially filled is fine. You can use them with different sizes because if you have different sizes of them you're going to get a variety of different sounds. First we're going to start with the slip of paper. All woodwind instruments have built into them something called an air splitter. And this little piece of paper is going to show you how that works. What you do with it is you pull it kind of snugly not so tight that you tear it, and you put it up to your lips and you're going to blow across it. Maybe you've seen somebody do this with a blade of grass. And you'll get some pretty weird sounds. But what is happening, and as if you could see it if the air were colored, is that by holding this piece of paper up to your lips flat on like this, that edge that we called for to be straight is splitting the air. Some of the air is going over, some of the air is going under. And that makes this paper vibrate really, really quickly. Can't see it, but that is what's happening. And when it does that, that's what makes the sound. And that's what makes woodwind instruments work. By the same token, when you start with a bottle such as this, does it matter what kind? But you don't want to go any wider than the mouthpiece of a, a pop bottle. You're going to take your lip, take your lower lip, roll it over your teeth, put it up to your lip like this so that you're resting the bottom or the back edge like this, right up against that lip. Can you see? <clears throat> and you blow across. If I do this often enough, you will notice that the inside there is starting to fog up. If I take and hold my paper out in front, when I blow across like that, you can see that the paper moves which will maybe give you a better idea of how some of the air goes down in and some of the air goes across. Now, this is one bottle. If I take a different bottle that has a different amount of air space in it, the bottle itself probably holds the same total amount of liquid as the other bottle would, but if I blow across this one, and the less air you have, air space you have in it, the harder it is to get it to work. <sighs> Notice that that's a higher sound, and that's all because there's less air space for the instrument part to work. If I go to a great big bottle like this, you will notice that there's an awful lot of liquid in this, but the amount of air space that exists is a whole lot bigger. So that means when I blow across, I get a much lower sound. The amount of airspace is what's going to decide whether it's going to make a high sound or a low sound. Now, if you worked with this kind of an instrument and you got good at it, the first couple times I suspect you may have a little trouble <laughs> until you learn exactly how to position your mouth on that mouthpiece. This is how flute instruments and piccolo instruments in the woodwind family make their sound by blowing across a hole like that and puckering your lip. Don't get too frustrated if it doesn't work for you the first couple times. Just keep trying until you do it. And then maybe what you'll want to do is take several bottles and pull them across like this and make a pop bottle choir, so to speak. or drink some water out of there and make it work a little easier. The third instrument grouping that we want to take a look at is going to use your straw. 
you will probably need an adult to help you, but what you want to do, my straw, as you see, has lines on it, and I've already cut it, but you're going to take your scissors, you're going to go in there, oh, about a half an inch, and you're going to cut a slit on that side and a slit on that side, and then you're going to take it, kind of flatten it out a little bit. It'll just make it easier for the next part of the cutting, and you're going to cut so that you get a nice point on it like this on both sides. Can you see what a nice point that is? Almost looks like a bird's beak, doesn't it? Now what you're going to do is gently take both of your lips and pull them over your teeth. Put that in. Close your mouth. Interesting. Now, oboes and English horns and bassoons will make sounds that way. They sound a whole lot better, but that also has to do with what the rest of the body of the instrument will look like. What you want to do is... And you can change the sound by pushing and pulling in. If you're not getting sound, you're probably too close to the edge. And by pushing and pulling in and out, you will get lower and higher sounds. You will also get lower and higher sounds depending on how tightly you pull this. Well, I hope you have had fun experimenting with the different ways that woodwind instruments make sounds. I hope you will remember these things and compare them to instruments that we will be using in the next couple of weeks. Have a great day.